Which word of the day? Today's word is arcane, adjective. Arcane magic is a mystical, enigmatic force. Arcane magic includes forces or phenomena that somehow transcend the natural laws that govern the world. They directly manipulate unknown energies that bend the fabric of reality to create a desired effect. Magic works without discernible physical cause and often without any rational explanation. A character working with arcane magic taps into some kind of mysterious, as of yet, unknown power source and shapes it into a chosen manner of effect, force, or energy that the magic user finds it useful. You haven't even read that? Wait, what are you doing with the book? So he has the confidence to finish the story. Hear now the words of the witches. This is Kevin and welcome to Words of the Witches, the Charmed podcast that will guide you through the lesser known published material in the Charmed universe and decide how it fits into the grand narrative of the TV series. We are back again, Spell Worders, and I don't have too many announcements. I just want to make some corrections for brain farts that I had last episode. <laughs> I had two. Uh, one of them was when I was trying to determine what the middle of a book was called when you look at it from the shelf, and it's a spine. Spine is the word I was looking for, and I do apologize for forgetting that one. I, it was a weird day. But even more offensive <laughs> was saying that Las Vegas was in New Mexico. I don't know why I said New Mexico. Uh, it's in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. I don't know. Uh, I was thinking of deserts and the end turned into New Mexico. What can I tell you? So yeah, there we go. I wanted to correct those right away because those were blaring at me after listening to the episode again. And uh, yeah, so this week we have Mist and Stone, a very fun book. This book does feel very similar to the episode Lost and Bound where we have Tyler the Firestarter. Uh, and Tyler does appear in a future book, The Brewing Storm, and he does appear in the comics, so I didn't want to focus too much on him in this book and kind of make it his own thing, um, because we're going to get a lot of him more in the future. Um, so here we go. So, this is Words of the Witches, book 18, episode 18, and... My guest this week is Axel Ada. Is that how you say it? Ada, Ida? Ada. 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 Okay, cool. And is that like a nickname or is something you, or is that your real name? Uh, no, my real name is Tony. I'm not okay. shy about my real name. It's just boring as fuck. Um, okay. <laughs> but my mom called me Axel when I was little because I used to play guitar. Um, I'm awful at guitar, guys. I play like three songs. But... Uh, growing up further, I'm a big fan of Kingdom Hearts, so that stuck as like my nerd nickname for any and all D and D things or whatever <laughs> I to, else I did. I was about to ask that because I think we talked about it before with the with the you know. Yes, know. that's awesome. Excellent. I'm so jealous of all your collectives. Yeah, I have lots of Kingdom Hearts figures. I still have to put some of my Kingdom Hearts guys up. Um, I still have a Sokka figure from Avatar I have to put up too. Um, I think the only memorabilia of anything I have is a dual disc. I still have my original dual disc. Cause I oh. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we have a lot of the same fandoms. We love our Avatar, we love our Kingdom Hearts, we love our Charmed. You know? Yes. It's, it's beautiful, a beautiful thing. And I noticed 626 in your email. Is that a Stitch reference? Uh, yes, I love <laughs> it. Um, I'm really good at Stitch and Gollum impressions. Um, so it's just one of my things. Um Ohana means family. <laughs> no one gets left behind or forgotten. Nagamatsu <laughs> Mitsu! I love that. I am, I am like obsessed right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when we talked about the gremlin and I talked about how it reminded me of Stitch, now you can be the voice of our, our uh, gremlin book. Yes. <laughs> Gilbert. His name was Gilbert. Yes. Really fun. Oh, and you you know what else you do? You do um your you have your own website where you sell witchy things. Do you want to talk about that? Uh okay. Um so I've been a witch since forever, since I could read, basically. Um and I do I whittle wands, I do handcrafted spell jars, and I make some jewelry. I am constantly trying to add new things onto the store. Soon there's gonna be some runes. Um, and then once I can get good jars, I have some candles, but I don't have good jars because the jars I ordered were awful. 
Oh, well, you know, it's a process. It's a trial and error it's process. A trial and error. You sent me some really cool stuff, which I I have kind of seen it around. It's like give me good vibes, but you know, I haven't used them to their full potential. I know. So. Well, thank you. I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> but if anyone wants to check out my website, it's axelaita.com. A X E L A I T A. Right, pop right up on Google. So, what was your charmed discovery like? Where did it? Where did you find it? Um, so basically, my mom had a bunch of books lying around, and I started to get into the witchy stuff. And my mom was like, "Here, you'll really like this show," and I did. And so that was all I watched besides Power Rangers and Yu Gi Oh back in the day. It was. Charm, Inuyasha, Power Rangers, Yu-Gi-Oh! on repeat. So okay. it went and that, from there. And I kind of branched into Buffy, but I always was more into Charmed. Yeah, see? And then there you go, another Power Rangers lover. See? We are kin. It's amazing. <laughs> and Buffy, I always watch kind of casually, but yeah, I never got into it the same way. So it is. And you know what? I'm all, I'm all about you know people... Not liking Buffy as much because it's very rare. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but you know it's fine. <laughs> I'm a I'm a charmed stan. I can't help it. Um, okay, well, I guess we'll get started with the book. This book is called Mist and Stone, and it has Paige kind of in the center with Phoebe on the right and Piper on the left, and Leo right behind Paige. So Leo's on the cover. This is like only the second yeah. book he's on I the cover for. That too. I was like, they just randomly added him in the cover. He's like, he's important in a lot of other books, but this one he's like, I'm really important. Yes, that's how you know. That's how you know that I am, am a key pivotal player here. And then in the background, there's like this bluish fogginess um, with like a, the full house street, <laughs> the full house neighborhood behind yeah, them. Basically. Oh, there's a little mansion in the back, you know, right far in the distance is the little mansion. Is that okay? So is that supposed to be the? Yeah, the Bay Haven. The Bay Haven, which we'll talk about, and then yeah, like this mistiness fog. And it looks like there's a ghost in there, but I can't make out an actual image. So maybe that's just supposed to be the fog. But yeah, the mist on on uh in Full House's neighborhood. There we go. Yes, and <laughs> has the tagline: "Can the charmed ones prevent an event that's predestined?" The back says, shadows of tomorrow from the past are sown on shifting sands and sorrows, veiled in mist or set in stone. Paige Matthews is accustomed to the requirements of her job as a social worker, and she's willing to endure some standard pay, long hours, and emotional drain. After all, she wants to make a difference, sometimes in a non-charmed capacity. But she is unprepared for the anger and rage she encounters in Todd Corman, a young boy who has been bounced from caregiver to caregiver for so long that he doesn't trust authority. Still, Paige is sympathetic and determined to break him. But when Phoebe stops by the agency for a quick hello, she is rocked by a vision that involves Todd. Strangely, the vision is shrouded in, in fog. After some investigation, Leo explains that this particular mist has nothing to do with the weather, but rather suggests that Todd's fate may not be set in stone. Todd has been targeted, and if the Trump ones are going to reverse destiny, they're going to have to race against the clock! Exclamation mark. It was written by Diana G. Gallagher, who also wrote Be Where we, What You Wish, Spirit of the Wolf, and Dark Vengeance before this. Uh, and then it was published May 1st, 2003, and reprinted July 7th, 2003. They say this takes place between uh, Lost and Bound and Merry-Go-Round, which was kind of the same area of... Um, where we've been to the last couple books <laughs> always okay. in that gray area with like, is Cole the source? Is he not the source? Is Phoebe engaged or is she married? Uh, so it's very strange. So this says that Phoebe is still engaged, but then we get the whole question. Well, Cole, Cole is just a really weird player in this book. He is. So he is very odd. Like he's not there, but then he is there. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll get into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, it's supposed to be between episode 12, Lost and Bound, and season four, episode 15, Merry-Go-Round. So that's what we got. Um, okay, I'll get, just get you going with chapter one. Okie dokie. So Piper is home alone, sorting through most of the old things she's accumulated in her life. She accidentally blew up a box of Leo's books. She says accidentally, but was it an accident? You know, never knew her. <laughs> Phoebe at the time is at a job interview at the temp agency. The interview, uh, the interviewer, Donald Ramsey, was hot because everyone was hot, even if she's engaged or not. 
Everyone. <laughs> Every man she sees. Everyone. Maybe even such a little, such a little hussy. I, I loved it. They made oh. it so much worse than the books. Oh, you minx. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, love it. You go, girl. Mm-hmm. But with her lack of experience and need for flexible hours, the interview does appear. Ugh, the interview appears to be a bust. Phoebe plans to go to Paige's work to pick up a book to borrow. Paige was busy with a case regarding a 12-year-old delinquent boy named Todd Corman. He was incorrigible, they said, and was set to go to Bay Haven for the home for troubled boys. What a name, Bay yeah. Haven. It's a haven of for it's a haven, <laughs> not a cult. It's a haven. Mm-hmm. Todd made a run for the door just as Phoebe entered Paige's work, and she grabbed him by the arm, receiving a vision. I'm just saying this was kind of weird to me that Phoebe's just like, "Oh, let me grab this child that's running that's not mine or I have no knowledge of." She's just grabbing the child. <laughs> See what I feel like? I kind of feel like because. She was coming through the door as he was trying to exit, so it was kind of like they're kind of like in the way. Was, okay, like, so she didn't go out of her way to grab him. She's just like, oh, oh, hi, child. Like, what is okay. this person running at me? Yeah. So, what is this person running at me? I read yeah. it and I was confused. I was like, is she just like nabbing this child <laughs> off the like? Yeah. You know, she's like, hey, no, 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 no. You're probably meant to be there. You know, uh, Phoebe sees a vision of a dark lighter in a fog threatening Leo. I do like how this is described with the fog. I love how her vision, um, how they describe her visions in the books, how it like sucks her in. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm falling into my vision. Ooh, yeah. And you know, that kind of had that effect on the show. It was like that zoom in. So that kind of, you know, right. ties into um, that. So yeah, that's chapter one. I had, I just thought it was weird that Phoebe had to have this book that from page right away. Like I have to come to your work to get the book. I can't see you when you get home later and give me the book then. Agreed. <laughs> it's like oh this this is just a ploy we need her to get to the next thing to get this premonition but but also she had nothing better to do to be yeah, fair true she's, she's like i'm bumming around i have no job whatever she's just self-reflecting and she's just like man kicking herself in the ass yeah so this book i think is supposed to technically take place before the last book because in the last book even though the time was off she was already working for the bay mirror oh so. okay yeah you're right Minor inconsistencies. Oh, I love your kitties. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of nine. You have one of nine. I've seen all your Instagram. I'm like, oh my gosh, all the cats make me happy. Because I, I'm a big cat person, but I don't have any pets anymore. So I like live vicariously through every, other people's pets. Uh, yes. I have nine cats and an 85-pound lab, uh, lab pit mix. Oh, my. This is Baymax. Ah. Oh! Another Disney reference, my heart, my heart. Oh, so cute. Well, he got his name because whenever every, uh, anyone is sick or upset, he will come and relentlessly give you love until you feel better. Yeah. So he is a personal healthcare companion. <laughs> I have Baymax on my phone. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Anyway, see, we're getting distracted, but <laughs> it's, good, it's good distractions. I'm very happy. All right. Chapter two. After a day of successfully completing many errands, Piper begins to make some bread that will accompany the dinner she had planned. So she's just having a wonderful day at home, doing her things, getting stuff done. Leo arrives and startles Piper. And Piper is on edge because demons haven't been attacking. And she keeps thinking about the next horrible thing to come. She's like, you know, things are too good. It's not going to last. We're going to get attacked by something crazy. And I don't want to deal with it. (laughs) Uh, Leo reminds her to enjoy the normal mundane moments of their lives while they can because you know they are hard to come by in the grand scheme of things uh and then piper plans to <laughs> she's been reading piper has been reading and she plans to grow a high yield garden in the backyard veggies and herbs that can be used in both her cooking and her witchcraft which you know i think is a, a smart thing to do uh i think she gets really crazy obsessed about this garden but <laughs> the idea is nice for what they the do. one time we ever see or talk about their backyard ever oh this is actually I was really glad you brought that up. I was gonna bring this up later, but uh, I have an ultimate power challenge now. Oh, okay. I wasn't planning on doing one this early, but this book brought it out of me. And when they come to me, I have to I have to abide them. So, so the, the ultimate power challenge. Ultimate power challenge for this episode is to see if people can find all the times in the series where the backyard was shown. 
Okay, because the only time I can think of is when Barbus was trying to like trick Piper into thinking she was crazy, and they were like in the backyard. I I I don't remember. I don't remember her in the backyard for that for that episode. I feel like but, it had to be because the charmed house was like the hospital, and they took her out back to see. Oh, that well, that's that's not that's a different episode. That's brain drain. Oh, okay. That was the source, which is which is well. Oh, you're right. Here. You're right. You're right. I don't know why I thought it was Barbus. <laughs> yeah, because you're probably thinking of sympathy for the demon when she comes and he tries to take take Cole's powers and he makes the fears come to life with the spiders and stuff. Okay. Yes. Okay. But yeah, you're in that brain drain. I didn't count for that brain drain episode. So now there's four times that we see the backyard, and so I'm giving you the total. If you can guess those four times we see the backyard, I'll get another feature. It's exciting. <laughs> Yay! Ultimate power challenge. Anyway, yeah, Piper's in the backyard. And then Phoebe and Paige come and they discuss her vision and wonder how Todd... No, actually, they don't come yet. They're still at work. But they discuss her vision and they wonder how Todd could possibly be connected to the Leo and the Dark Lighter. Then the vision. They're like, what? Why is Leo there? Why is the Dark Lighter there? What does this kid have to do with anything? He's just a random kid. And they agree that Todd will go to Bay Haven as planned because they can just keep him there as you know, a place to keep him busy, keep him somewhere secure where they know where they can find him while they figure this out. Um, and they should be on the lookout for times at dusk and dawn when fog was high, like in Phoebe's vision. So they figure it has to be at one of those times. Phoebe goes to the bookstore and coffee shop and contemplates her love life and career and how they compare to others. Yeah, this was a really weird scene. She's just like, oh, Piper does this, Paige does this. What does my life with Cole mean? Like, so yeah, so, very self reflective. She's yeah. like, everyone has a purpose but me. I don't know what I'm doing. Right. It's like kind of a strange place for it, but sure, everybody needs those moments in their life. <laughs> they come in random times, you know? Yeah. And then chapter three, Paige drives Todd to the Bay Haven and has been putting up with his hostility and verbal abuse. This kid. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. The attitude on this kid. I'm like, ooh, this brat. Todd like, to leave the car. Yeah, he's just trying to jump out of the car. Like, <laughs> he knows if it's moving or not. He's just trying to jump out of the car. It's fine. Yeah. And like, like well, she just orbs. She's just like, lock. I'm not dealing with your shit no more. Yeah, she orbs a lock to her hand. It's so clever. Like, it is. Although, I feel like... There's no way she she would have the knowledge to orbit back functionally, but magic, right. you know, plot armor, assist, whatever. Right, she it was clever. Right, she could orbit probably back in place, but then it wouldn't be connected. It would be like, oh, I just broke my lock forever now. Great. It's okay. Leo will fix it. Leo fixes everything. Yeah, I'll heal it like my inconsistent healing powers do. <laughs> yes, even later in this book. <laughs> Uh, she smiled when uh, when Todd attempts to when Todd's es- attempt to escape fails. She <laughs> and Todd arrive at the Stone Mansion. They are greeted by the administrator Ray Marino. Very Italian. Yeah, very very mob bossy. Yeah. Todd thinks about how Paige reminds him of his dead mother. He woes how every person that seems nice stops caring the moment he messes up. Todd holds his hand out for a cat that appears out of nowhere, and ruckus ensues. Paige and Ray hear Todd shriek and find the cat had scratched him. Ray insults him and blames him, saying that he must have harmed the cat. Yeah. Lies. It was so sad. I was just like, there's a hard cry from being a brat to harm an animal. Right. And it was crazy because you see him. He, like, puts his hand out. She's like, yeah, oh, like help. He's like, will you love me, cat? And then, you know, he gets scratched. So he's like, ah! <laughs> but, yeah. like, he was trying. You know, he's he wants to... He was he trying. Can. I know. And then we have it's, Ray over here. It's weird, because I go from hating this kid, because this kid was really insufferable at the beginning. I'm like, I'm like I would not tell if it's your nannigans, but then you're like, okay, I want to understand you more. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I understand it, because foster care and the child service system is definitely not fun for the child of any nature. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I get his hostility, but poor Kitty. Kitty (laughs) didn't do nothing. Kitty's just scared. Ray insults him, and Paige wrote her cell number on a card trying to give it to Todd. Todd just shoves it back and says, I don't need it. (laughs) Piper and Leo are digging up the backyard, and... Piper goes inside because she, you know, she never actually does the work. She's going to make Leo do the work. She's like, right. all right, well, I'm going to get you some water. 
Yeah. Do some crackers. It's fine. <laughs> Duh. And then she finds a rat and or a mouse and she freezes it and then says it's better than blowing it up because this poor mouse just trying to live. <laughs> all yeah. the, almost animal abuse in this uh, in this book. Paige calls the manor and tells Piper and Phoebe that she dropped Todd off, but something didn't feel right about the cat event. Something about it stuck out to her. Mm-hmm. Probably because Ray is sketchy. Yeah. They realize that Todd accepts when he does wrong, but can't tolerate being blamed for things he didn't do. Paige asks Leo to orb in and check on Todd, where they kind of... I, I And I do and don't understand this part where they're like he can be invisible i know that they kind of like can sense when people are in the room before they orb in but since when can he be invisible i had that in my notes too it's not right he's not invisible the only time he becomes invisible is when he is an elder and he doesn't oh my god as he has an invisibility thing yeah Um, but no he doesn't it's not something he does as a white letter it's something he can only do as an elder and even as an elder he only did it like once or twice. <laughs> right. I feel like that's, it was just like a lazy attempt at saying he can hover and like watch sort of mm-hmm. before orbing in. But yeah. he was just straight up invisible. And I was like, Hmm. Like, no, I, was like, I don't think so, but okay. <laughs> Piper and Phoebe get the feeling Leo is hiding something. I don't understand where they get the context from the very little things that Leo does that he's hiding something, but okay, he's hiding something. There's something about Leo. We're like, you know, this bitch is always hiding something, so he knows more than he lets on. I know, especially season seven. God, oh, he's such a little secretive. True. Uh, They're right, but like, he's just trying to garden. He's like, I'm just doing what y'all ask. I don't know. (laughs) Chapter four, Leo arrives at Bay Haven. And Leo discreetly watches as Todd has a tantrum. Oh, yeah. So he's invisible now <laughs> at Bayhaven yeah. watching Todd. And he watches Todd have a tantrum about being there. And then Ray grabs Todd and shoves him on the bed. Ray gets real rough. Uh, he gives him a lesson about manipulation. I want to read what he says. Let's see. 61. The secret to controlling any situation is the manipulation of everyone involved. But successful ma- manipulation of others begins with self-control. Like, wow. You are very classy i don't know <laughs> like sociopath 101 okay yeah yeah so and it's just scary that this is the kind of guy that's in charge of delinquent children it's kind of like crimson spell that book when they had that guy who was in charge of the the people in foster care and stuff and people who had trouble it's like they take advantage yeah, they're already malleable and, and vulnerable i am upset but whatever uh leo believes todd's hurt will eventually consume him if he doesn't have a restored trust in someone so Leo just sees that, you know, Todd is kind of going down a dark path. And Paige then tries to track down Todd's father. So we learned that Todd's mother died uh, a few years ago. And they don't know where his father is. So she tries to track him down. Maybe that he can, you know, get him to be in a better place or, you know, at least get to him. And then Leo tells the girls he thinks Todd is so devoid of emotion that he could lose his humanity. Uh, Phoebe has been working a general... She's been working on a general power of three spell to vanquish all dark lighters. So that's a really heavy thing to say about a twelve-year-old. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, so, like he's twelve years old. He's already ready to forfeit his humanity. I don't think he knows what humanity is yet. But okay. Yeah, yeah. He's just he, he's just like he's so he has no emotion. He's so apathetic. Like uh, very un un Leo like of the normal like hope for all. Right. He's like your power comes from your emotions. You should know that his you know emotions aren't always written on your sleeves you know sometimes they're deep down you know you can still be emotional without having without showing it which we learn yeah um in chapter five all at the manor have their tasks they go through that that weird laundry list of what everyone's doing yeah it's like you'll do this i'll do this you'll do this yeah yes leo thinks phoebe's vision may be a mist and stone effect meaning the future is not fully cemented in it is in flux and subject to change i do like that they used this, although I wish they used it more. Like, in, in show, it would have been a neat thing that they could have used more. Well, the thing is, I feel like that is something that was always apparent. Like, I don't think her visions were ever really... Right. I guess. That's true. They're not always correct, and they're the point yeah. is to like, change them anyway. Yeah. The fact that you've seen a vision, that foresight automatically makes it 
change. Just because the fact that you know something can automatically alter the future. So okay, that's valid. So then, what is the point of this? It's not affected at all. Then right. Ray tests Todd and the other boys by making them fight over a sandwich. This whole scene fucked me up. I was like, what? Yeah. I thought happening in real life, and I just, it made me want to cry. This this dude straight up makes them fight over a sandwich. He's like, all right, have at it. Yeah, he's like, you guys won't eat. He's like, he made, he made them starve for something that happened the night before because Todd yeah, was being... Yeah, for a day and a night. And then he's like, here's the sandwich. This one sandwich is for the four of you. Yeah, he cut it into four pieces, and he's like, you can't touch it for, whatever, 30 seconds or whatever. And then when the timer goes off, free for all. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Horrible. That whole thing was just wild. Yeah. And he feels, and Ray feels no remorse. Todd ends up getting the sandwich and and, uh, shares it with... Hank? Hank. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He... Originally, it's three versus one, and then the one guy who kicked him originally, he's like, that's what I think about fair, and gives it to Hank. At that point, I was like, kind of deserve it, you little bitch, but... Yeah, they think, like, Todd is trying to form an alliance now, like, what's his... Right, guy? and I'm just like, this is prison rules nonsense. These yeah. are children, but I guess that's what happens with delinquent children. I wouldn't know. Ray dials a call to his superiors and reports on Todd, telling them that he thinks Paige's meddling could ruin his project plans for todd quotes okay. on project yeah project plans yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we don't know much about what's happening yet but we're like oh but his plans this? for todd could be interrupted by those meddling kids and their dog <laughs> they plan to have her taken off the case page yeah yeah they have her, they plan to have page taken off the case because of course everyone has just all the upper connections everywhere right like, we can't have her screwing up the plan. She, you know, I, I sense the connection with Todd and Paige, and we don't want that. And then we go to Paige's work at South Bay Social Services, and Lila tells Paige the copier is broken. Uh, Paige goes to fix it, and she's really terrible at it. She doesn't know, so she, she uses the smell to fix it. Yes. <laughs> um, papers fly about, and all her, her, her things that she wants copied fly about, and Paige wonders if she is just really paranoid or if she thinks that somebody is watching her and it's the dark lighter. So um, after work, Paige goes, there's a little scene in there that I skipped because it was just Piper and Phoebe doing their thing. It wasn't very interesting. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Paige after, goes to fill up her ga- car with gas after work. And as she's filling up the car, the pump in her hand begins to heat up. And she's like, oh, this is getting hot. I got to let go of this. And she <laughs> grabbed her car and orbed her and her car out of the way and then it exploded <laughs> which is a whole feat in and of itself because like prue could only move x amount of weight but she can just orb anything anywhere yeah it's, just, it's like i can't move this statue that's ugly in my foyer but i will take this car and run yeah uh, dip yeah but uh yeah that was crazy uh and i, I misread that first i thought it says she orbed into her car. Like she got into the one she orbed into her car out of the way, but no, she orbed her whole car in somewhere off in the distance. And so great. And then, uh, she realizes that the, uh, <laughs> gas station patrons were in peril because if that explosion spreads to the rest of the gas station, the whole place is going to go up and all these civilians are going to be killed. So, uh, she orbs the whole pump into a neighbor's pool, made blows. Like, as this experiment explodes, she's like, okay, pump! And she throws it into the <laughs> pool, and then the pool gets completely destroyed, but <laughs> she saved all of the people. And, <laughs> and all the... I don't know if the insurance would cover that pool. <laughs> no, it's like... And all the civilians were just stunned and grateful to be alive. They didn't really notice her power. It's just like... Because they're just kind of, like, totally in shock at the explosion to begin with. They're like, all right, well, I'm going to get out of here, because that was scary. And... <laughs> <laughs> they have the one guy who's like, "Never mind, honey, I'm coming home." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get the meeting. There's like that guy. There's like the lady and her kids, and she's like, "Yeah, let's just let's go." Uh, so Paige wonders now. She's like, "Was this just a fluke, or was I like an intended victim?" She's like just questioning everything right now. Uh, and then we get to we see Scar. A deck. And when I first heard Scar, I just thought of the Lion King. Same. <laughs> I was like, I was oh. Lion King, Full Metal Alchemist. Lion King, Full Metal Alchemist. 
<laughs> yeah. So I'm like, all right. But this is Scar, Dark Lighter. And he was sent to get Paige out of the way. So this is probably who Ray was talking. This was his superiors that he was talking to. So we're not going to just get Paige off the case. We're going to get her out of the way. We're going to kill her. <laughs> um, but this whole situation, this whole scene that just played out, uh, just made him learn that she is a witch and a white letter hybrid. And it made him curious to learn more. So that he's like, oh, I know her now. Okay, I, I can't kill her. I need to investigate. So uh, Paige got out of there, and as when she was gone, Scar shot an arrow at another gas tank and causing the whole place to explode anyway. So, <laughs> Right, everyone's gone, but he's like, you know what? I just need more fire. It's fine. It's like, it's like I'm mad. I'm just a little upset right now, so I need, I need to get you know this out of my system and explode the place. <laughs> so oh, in this episode or in this yeah. book, that would have been that would have been a, an expensive thing to do in the show. True. Get some Zoolander <laughs> action here. <laughs> uh, Piper, Phoebe, and Paige are now back at the manor, and they watch the oh, and Leo, and they watch the news and discover the Inferno coverage had two explosions and Paige is like two no I only had that one but like oh the whole place is up in smoke so okay I don't know uh and they debate the possibilities of what this could be is this the dark lighter what is happening um and Scar is of course eavesdropping from the corner of the room so he can be invisible too dark yeah let's have this invisible Apparently. quality all right, and then we get um, per Scar's instruction. Ray awakens Todd and the three other boys from their bed, and brings them into the woods because that's not at all creepy oh or cool. Like, I was like, "All right, we're going here." Um, Scar watched and determined that Todd had all the traits needed for the Dark Lighter recruitment project, while the others did not. Just as selfless people did not become white lighters, dark lighters were born from those with hardened hearts and no tolerance for mercy. In his previous life, yes, we go on this whole rant about Scar's previous past, <laughs> which basically, for no reason, it's just feel like it was for word count, to be honest. <laughs> you because know. he was, uh, you know, a mighty warrior, and he was put to death. For disobeying Caesar's orders and killing his prized gladiator. First, he's, uh, he rants about his plan to create a loyal army of dark lighters before he goes on a rant about his past. Yeah, so, and I guess maybe this is just to show people that he was human. Like, this is a past life, just like Leo had his past life with the war. So this is just like, okay, okay. this is what my life was. I was a human once, too. Um, so that's why I kind of, just to give us that context... Yeah, he went on this rant. He stood in the center of a crowd as he accepted his, uh, as he accepted his death. They talk. He talks about how he would always touch his disfigured face from his first and um, his first fight, which was the only one he really lo like almost lost. The man uh, slashed his face while he skewered his heart with a spear, and then after. After he killed Caesar's prized fighter, he was sentenced to death, and crowds were cheering his name. Even as he was put to death, three lions starved for, for three days were set loose and ripped him apart. He woke up in the netherworld and accepted his new fate, as not even death would defeat him. Yes. I, uh, I was like, yeah, because he, he walked in there. The arena is like, yep, I'm gonna die today, but yep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, all I'm, right. gonna take, I'm gonna take it because I'm not gonna let you n get the satisfaction of trying to like bring me down. He's like, whatever, dude, this is me. So he was, he was egocentric and crazy, but I guess it's good. I, I like that a bad guy though. I'm like, all I right, know. don't be afraid to die if you're gonna go on a killing spree. Don't yep. be afraid to die. They say he was brutal and unforgiving, and he was just like he was. I don't know. He was sadistic too, but yeah, that's, he's you know he's a good villain. I I like him. He is a good villain, and I think it's really poetic. His name is Scar, and he was killed by lions. <laughs> I know they did that on purpose. I know. I'm like, mm. <laughs> anyway, continue. At the, manor, <laughs> all good. At the manor, they're still looking for clues on the potential danger. Phoebe has trouble coming up with a dark lighter vanquishing spell. Because writer's block happens all the time, and they can't, you know, get past it until the third act. <laughs> Phoebe, uh, Paige worries about Todd, and Phoebe thinks Todd is testing everyone he meets 
to see if they would love him unconditionally no matter what he does. That's so sad. That's yeah. so sad. That was that was uh, Phoebe using her psychology degree to use. Yeah, so she's, she's really the... psychoanalyzing him, which is yes, smart. I love it. But you also think Paige would have some form of psychology background? Sure, sure. Being a social worker. <laughs> so I, she's like so clueless. She's like, really? Would that be a thing? But after Phoebe says that, she's like, oh my gosh, that makes total sense. You're right. <laughs> Piper asked Phoebe if. She's ever felt abandoned for their mother, b- 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 their mother dying, and Phoebe asked Piper the same thing. They agree they never did, but Paige remembers how she felt responsible for the death of her adopted parents. Todd is in the middle of ten laps that Ray was making the boys run. Yeah, they're fighting again because they were fighting. They all had to do laps. Yep. Ray scared Todd, but he would never let his feelings show and give ev- anyone the upper hand, so he acted like he didn't care. The boys are led to a creepy tunnel because they were already in the woods. So, you know, let's lead them to the creepy it-like tunnel. Oh my gosh. Where they're led to a creepier shower with only cold water and no soap because, of course, we have to watch some children shower in this creepy cult show. And then uh, Todd knew he couldn't be controlled if he wasn't intimidated. The way he says that, if you can't be intimidated and you can't be controlled, like if you can't deal with this cold water, or if you can deal with this cold water and you can deal with your natural um, reactions, you can't be controlled. I'm like, this is some really weird training. I don't like it. Yeah. It was so whack. This scene was so uncomfortable. It was like some torture kitty porn, and I'm just yeah, like, I was like, I, I don't like this. I don't like this. <laughs> I just kept trying to think about the fact that these are some sadistic cult people. I was like, this just screams cults, and oh, yeah. so yeah. creepy. So much heebie-jeebies in this. Mm-hmm. And then Todd's <laughs> just thinking about Paige. He's like, please help me. Hoping out hope that she will come help. Yeah, she was the only person that could save him from this Ray guy. Oh, Oh yeah, oh, that. for children. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. Anyway, okay, chapter eight. Paige calls Ray to follow up with Todd because this is something that they do in all of their cases. Whenever they uh, have a kid go, they have like a follow up appointment to just to see if they're adjusting well and things like that. Um, and Ray canceled their appointment, but he made up all these excuses, and they so- sounded like good reasons for Paige why she couldn't drop by. I'm like, this, she's like, this makes sense. It could check out. But uh, Paige hung up the phone and she still felt uneasy about it. She's like, I don't know. I, I believe him, but not, something doesn't seem right to me. So Paige decides, she's like, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to still check in on Behaven to investigate discreetly. Paige goes there and she sees the boys in a classroom with a scarred man in black watching them from his desk. She assumes like, this is like a substitute teacher. Yeah, but they all seem like they're fine. And then she was there for like 40 minutes walking around, seeing the cook and everything. She's like, well, everything seems in order. So I'll just leave and I'll go find, spend more time trying to track down Todd's father now, which I was so upset. I'm like, oh, of course she's going to go investigate and see nothing wrong. I'm just confused on how she saw the dark lighter and was like completely normal. Yeah. She's like, oh, that's not the normal teacher. People aren't running around in black robes. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, I guess that's just the guy. All right. Okay. Now we have Scar. He comes to Ray's office and they're talking and the phone rings in the office. And I guess Bayhaven was rigged so that all outgoing calls from there that don't have the right pin, they have to enter like a pin code for them to like connect with outgo with where they're trying to connect. Right. Like so, you don't have the extension number. Yeah. The extension number. So if you don't type that in, all of your calls get routed to Ray's office instead. Shade E. Oh my gosh. Uh, but I guess they really want to keep these kids you know, under I their want to keep them quiet. Yeah, under their thumb. So uh and then Scar answers the phone and it was Todd. And Todd's is he's like, Is this South Bay Social Services? I'm looking for a page and Scar's like, Oh yes, I'm this is South Bay Social Services. I'm Paige. <laughs> Uh, and he mimicked her voice because dark layers can mimic people's voices. And Todd's like, Paige, come help me. And she's and Scar's like, oh, no, 
I won't help you. You did. You brought this on yourself. You know, you have to stay there now. I can't help you anymore. Don't call this number again. <laughs> yeah, like savage as hell, just cold. Just no, no, I'm done with you. Sorry, bye. So yeah, so now Todd thinking the only one person that could actually like be on his side is completely abandoned him. He completely has a tantrum. He breaks down. He destroys the other office in, that he's in and like throws things and makes a complete disaster of it all. Um, and Scar is thrilled. He's like, "Well, yes, now a dark lighter is being born." <laughs> oh, horrible though. Yeah, <laughs> this poor boy. Because normally they would like get a kid primed and ready, and they would like make him evil throughout his life, and then they would like turn him into a dark lighter in adulthood. But they're but like, now, no, he's evil enough now. Yeah, Scar's like, oh, I, I can make Todd a Dark Letter right now. Like, I can think of all the advantages of having a child Dark Letter. We can sneak in. You know, they'll be more trusting. White Letters will trust them more. They're very insidious. Ha ha ha. No one would suspect a child Dark Letter. I'll bring them all to listen to me. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, so they intend to end Todd's mortal life as soon as possible. Like, we need to kill him and make him a Dark Letter. Let's go. So, but first... He wants to test Todd by getting him to kill Paige. He's like, if he can kill Paige as a boy human, then he's going to be definitely uh, going to be a dark lighter when he dies. So <laughs> Phoebe then helps Cole find his wallet and wish him well as he went to the, well, Cole's been going to the, the library this whole book because he's studying his, he's human now. So he's like studying his law practices. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be a good lawyer. I'll go to the library and study, which I don't know. I don't buy that. Cole's not that kind of guy. Right. They were like, I, we can't, but then again, you said this is in between, in between when he's like, maybe the source. So maybe he's just doing sketchy shit. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, this is, we could be just going off of the, the, what the sisters know and not what is really happening. So it's possible. He, he sketchy demonic way. activity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, no, Cole goes to the, li- the library and <laughs> Phoebe is just left home alone again. And she goes to the kitchen. She admires Piper's compost pot, taking in the fumes. She's like, this is going to help me write my spell. <laughs> yes, aromatherapy. Yes. And then Phoebe uh, picks up Paige's business card because the card that she tried to give Todd earlier is sitting there and she gets a vision. Um, and she sees her vision is again in kind of mist, mistiness. So, you know, it's in flux and she sees Leo and several feet from Leo is a dark letter with a scar. I wonder who that could be. <laughs> and then they change the focus and it shifts to Todd and he's aiming a crossbow at Leo. And she's like, Oh my God. <laughs> yes. And then we go to Todd's point of view where he's just feeling like, awful and in despair because Paige abandoned him and everyone just, you know, abandons him. Ray and Scar confront Todd and they tell him that he's really going to be going to uh, the juvenile prison as a ploy to try and, like, lure him to evil. They're like, sorry, buddy. You're going <laughs> to juvie. Yep. Paige did it. Blame Paige her. did it, yeah. Paige says send ju- she's sending you to juvie because you called when you weren't supposed to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry, bud. It sucks to be you. Yeah, it sucks to suck. Sorry. Nothing we can do about it. And he was outwardly apathetic, but he was just trying to, you know, hold a brave face, not let them know he was bothered. Mm-hmm. And then we go back to Piper and Leo talking to Phoebe in the kitchen about some tomatoes because tomatoes were so important. <laughs> um, they go to the backyard and Phoebe tells them of their vision. The vision is still misty and... Leo knows it is not set in stone. They decide to find out if Todd is an innocent or not, and the lawn bursts into flames. Still yeah. understand how he's like randomly exploding things. Yeah. <laughs> there was never an explanation, just things are combusting in a fire. I mean, maybe, because there have been some dark writers that had specific power, so maybe his power has something to do with fire. I don't know. You know, because like, Alec, Alec had the touch of death, and they had the spirit killer, which was a certain type of dark litter. So... Right. They, they went through a whole, like, if you killed someone with that power, you could have it. So... Yeah. Maybe he killed someone with fire power. But the lawn erupts and um, bursts into flames. Scar is just kind of chilling there, watching from afar. <laughs> Phoebe levitates to avoid the fire and Piper freezes it and it blows off the top of a sprinkler. 
completely casual. No one saw anything. It's fine. <laughs> it's like, this is our backyard. Don't look in our backyard. Yeah. You know, <laughs> who knows if they have a privacy fence? I don't remember. But Scar knows that they will tell Paige and she will come to check on Todd. But she has, but he has plans to kill both Paige and Leo. Yeah, got to get all those white letters. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to get two for one. Chapter 10. Piper calls Paige and tells her about Phoebe's vision and the fire. And Paige is like, that's weird. All right. Well, <laughs> so she goes to Bay Haven to get Todd out. She's like, well, this dark letter is around. We need to, you know, get to Todd now. But she knows that that puts her at risk because she is half white letter. Uh, the dark letter could be there trying to lure her there. She's like, I know it's a risky, but I have to do it. Piper and Leo begin to plant more because that's what you do in a crisis. <laughs> of course. Like, oh, what? we don't have anything to do yet, so we'll just plant some more. And Piper looks at the charred grass as an opportunity for a bigger garden. <laughs> I mean, oh. hey, that's, that's pretty factual. I have a, I, we bought a house, and I have a giant burn pile in the backyard before we moved in, and then we burned it, and then a giant lion turtle now exists of flora oh. and stuff. So, love that. It, it turn- works. Make lemonade out of lemons. That's what you do. Uh, Or you can grow them in your garden. There you go. (laughs) In her bigger garden. Uh, Phoebe continues to work on her spell writing. So she's trying to get the spell perfected because she's still having trouble with it. Um, Cole calls Phoebe and tells her he locked his keys in the car. So he's like, hey, can you come get me? And he like, he's getting, gets pushy. He like begs her to come and get him and they can work together on the spell. But I was like, I was already getting fishy vibes from this. I'm like, mm. and you were like, you locked your keys in your car. Yeah. Which, you know, I've done before, but still it's just like, cause Phoebe's like, no, I can't. We're, there's lots of other stuff to do. Like call like triple a, like whatever. But he was like, right. yeah. he was like, no, please come get me. Like, I'll oh, help you work on the spell. Yeah. yeah. So Phoebe drives to where Cole told her to go. He's like, this is the, this is the parking lot I'm in. This is the spot I'm in. And when she gets there, um, there's no sign of him or his car. So she's like, all right. She's like, maybe I got the wrong place. Maybe I wrote it down wrong. I don't know. So Phoebe calls Cole to no answer. She calls her sisters, no answer. So then Phoebe starts to get fear the worst. She's like, okay, you know, I bet this dark letter is responsible. He's like, I know dark letters can make voices. I bet you this guy is like using techno, whatever it's called, technopathy to, to block my calls. Uh, and this is a ploy to isolate her from the power of three. She's like, so she's like really like honest, like okay, this is not right. So this has to be it. <laughs> yeah, she was very jumpy. She's like, you know what? This is part of something. We need to. I need to get out of here. So now it comes to Paige, and she arrives at Bay Haven. Um, she gets there. She rings the doorbell. No answer. She rings it again. No answer. She's like, okay, I'm gonna leave. And as she leaves, Ray opens the door. He's like, Paige. Oh. Um. So then he allows her to come inside, and she walks in. She notices the cat carrier. Um. She's like, oh, what's this guy doing here? And then Ray says something about, like, the blow to the head or whatever. And she's like, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's and, just so callous. He's like, one, nothing that a blow to the head will fix. And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, well, that. And so Paige is, like, suspicious. So she, tries, she starts to orb away. But before she, like, mid-orb, Ray, like, knocks her in the head with a police baton and knocks yeah. her out. Oh! <laughs> also no explaining where he gets the police baton but just has a police baton <laughs> just chilling in his office yep. yeah. yeah that's another that's another story so Ray whacked her with the police baton before she could orb away and then we go back to Phoebe and she's rushing down the hallway in her car she's like speeding she's like I've got to get to the Bayhaven mansion that's where we gotta go because that's where Paige is going um, and Piper will inevitably, be, inevitably go there too because Leo is going to be there in my vision so that's my, and that's where the vision took place with a stone wall. So I'm just going to go there. Um, as she sped, she thought hard about her past encounters with dark letters. So it was, this was cool because they mentioned a lot of the ones from the past, like the Alec and the spirit killer with Maggie Murphy and stuff. So that was cool. And they talked about Ames. Um, and then maybe she's like, maybe they recruit from the bad, just like the white letters recruit from good. And she's like, oh, Todd, that must be it. <laughs> and then Phoebe touched her, she wanted to make sure she still her spell, so she touched her spell with Paige's business card in there as well. And then a third vision came to her, and she careened off the road. She crashed when her vision came to her. And oh, so I had a I had a weird thought about this. So 
the the elders give her the visions yes like essentially you know so like if they're the powers that be allow her the vision so what kind of powers that be are going to just let you get into a car accident like that see this is because the, they occasionally in the show they they would allude to the fact that the powers came from the elders which pisses me off because I don't believe that to be true at all. I don't believe, because like the powers are their birthright. There's a witchy thing. The elders should have not no control over that. So whenever they talk about that, like the elders allowed this to happen or they made this happen, I'm like, I don't buy it. I'm not going to believe that because that's not my, right. that's okay. my, that's that's my fair. I just, you always hear Leo. They wouldn't love, you know, let you see what you saw. if You weren't meant to or whatever. And I'm just right. like, but you're just meant to get no car crash. Okay. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And the, well, you know, there's a story about that because I immediately thought of my sister because my sister um, has a mild case of epilepsy. And one time she had a seizure while she was driving and she kind of crashed into something. So I'm like, a vision, having a vision in the middle of driving would probably be a lot like having a seizure on the road. And it's terrifying. Yeah. Um, um, but she's, they said when my sister got in the crash that it was actually a good thing that she was having the seizure because if she wasn't, she probably could have broke her arms or been killed because the way that she was loose kept her safe. Oh, geez. Okay. Wow. So, so maybe, you know, that's part of what saved GP in this case. I don't know. But okay. That, interesting. That interesting. is a good take on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. crazy. All right. We're going to chapter 11 here. Uh, Paige wakes up in a stone courtyard behind the mansion, and she can't move. Scar grabs her and roughly props her up against the wall, and Todd appears, seeming loyal to Scar, and Scar tells Paige his whole life story, and Todd is well by proximity. He gives Paige a potion to stop her from moving or even orbing. I did think that was pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they explain that he is the only one left that can mix that potion. Scar apports his crossbow and hands it to Todd, spouting more lies about Paige, saying you should kill her because she doesn't care about you. She doesn't care if you live or die. Not like me and Ray do. <laughs> Ugh, so cringy. Mm-hmm. And then in the backyard, Leo sends Phoebe and her feelings that Paige is in danger, and but then her signal disappeared. Leo wants to orb to find Paige, but Frantic Piper has a better idea. Phoebe came to, her car is crashed and totaled into a tree. She recalls her training back with Cole and like yeets the hell out of there. She <laughs> tucks and rolls. And make sure that the car isn't going to explode. That she's okay. And then she's like, I gotta run. (laughs) And so she starts hauling ass towards Bay Haven. um, And then she recollects on her vision about Paige being killed by a dark lighter arrow. And a ghostly dark lighter that emerges from Todd. And kills Leo. So pretty much her vision is like pretty much everything. She's like, okay, mortal Todd kills Paige instantly. Then... And Scar kills, <laughs> kills Todd, Todd. And, and Todd then, kills Leo. Yeah, Todd becomes a dark letter then and becomes, kills Leo. So this whole like process of events happened all in her vision. <laughs> yes. Phoebe keeps calling for Leo and there's no there's no response. So again, she just hauls ass towards Bayhaven. She makes a weird note about it being half a mile for a raven's flight or something. I'm like, it's, wow, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right. <laughs> She reads a lot, so who knows? Yeah. Um, Paige felt the potion wearing off. I don't know how she, like, if she can barely move her hand, she's able to orb, but we'll go with it. We'll go with the loose, you know, by by laws of this potion. Mm -hmm. But she's like, I'm probably only going to have one chance to orb. And then she saw Piper and Leo orb in as she orbed out. And I'm just like, oh, no. I was like, of course. (laughs) Yeah. It's like one of those Scooby-Doo moments where they just go into the opposite ends of the hallways. Yep. <laughs> so Paige rubbed out, and then chapter 12, Phoebe arrives at Bay Haven. She hauled it quick. She was on her feet. She, and she, you know, she's crazy. She's like a bloody mess. She just got a cut on her head. She was just in a car. Oh, yeah, but, she, yeah uh, but, she, but she's running over there anyway. She, what a fighter. So she arrives at Bay Haven, and she runs, runs up the driveway, and then Paige just 
Orb's right in front of her on the ground on the driveway. So she's running. Paige is like, ugh, I made it to the driveway and I'm on the ground. And so Phoebe, because she's still kind of like feeling the effects of the potion a little bit. Still, she's a little immovable, I guess. So Phoebe helps Paige into some bushes and they chat about what they know. <laughs> and then Paige is like, okay, I'm just, the potion's done now. I wore off that. Let's go or back to the courtyard. <laughs> So in their chat, she finally got full control, I guess. <laughs> yeah, again, loose bylaws of this potion. Yeah, but they they did say that because she was only like half white letter, it wasn't as effective. Maybe, but that makes sense. That that's yeah. fair. Yeah. So Piper freezes Todd, who is aiming at Leo. Yeah. So yeah, Todd hits a crossbow. He's aiming at Leo. Piper freezes him. Um, Scar is unaffected by the freeze, which is interesting. Um. And he gloats that once that freeze wears off, Todd's fate will be sealed. And to me, I'm just like, <laughs> um, they can always freeze him again. They can always like grab the someone cross- just take the cross, right? Yeah, they can take the cross away. They can grab the arrow mid air. Like that's not necessarily seal the fate, but like it's not like once <laughs> it's done, it's done. So I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> but then the sisters get together. They're all there. They come together and they take Phoebe's power three spell and they vanquish Scar for good. When the fuck did Phoebe finish this goddamn spell? I know. That's what I was thinking. Like, she's or, like, she, she's like, I got two lines down. And then she went to go get Cole, who wasn't there, and then went to Bayhaven and got into a car accident. Somewhere between the car accident and Paige's chat, they finished the spell. Yeah. I, th- I don't remember. I think maybe she had it in her head, maybe, but she didn't write it down. So she's like, okay, you guys, here's the rest of the spell. It's like, and I don't know, because they barely. They, I don't know how Piper and Fee- Paige learned the spell too, because they like maybe they held it. She held it out, but maybe, it was weird. But remember, they also have that weird psychic link. That yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, maybe. It was so, just, like when the hell did she finish this goddamn spell? I know. I thought about that too. <laughs> but yeah, they say it. He's dead. Uh, and then yeah, Todd's so frozen. So Paige is like, "We gotta test Todd's heart now. I need to know." So she gets into Todd's line of fire where the dark letter is. If he shoots me, I can orb away. Just like she's putting a lot on the line here. <laughs> yeah, they're like, it's fine. Whatever. I, if I yeah. die, it, I'll, I'll be fine. Plot yeah. on me. Yeah, but she's like, I need to know. So Piper, she, Paige gets in his path and he shoots towards like a deer statue instead. Um, so as he like completely goes, doesn't shoot Paige. And then he falls to the ground. He starts sobbing. He's in tears. And this is a really nice moment because Paige then, she goes and comforts him. She's like, you know. You know, it's okay. And he's like, I was never going to shoot you. She's like, I know. And then Piper blows up the crossbow and the arrows. So then they all go to find Ray. They're like, we're going to get him. He's going to get, he's going to have to, he's going to go to court for this, you know, and Todd agrees to testify against him. So like, we're going to go find Ray. We're going to get him. So Todd leads them all into the house, the mansion, and then they find Cole there. Yeah. <laughs> Random, but I I was all here for him. Like, that's a twist. I like it. Um, I was for it too. I was like, well, that's where you've been all the fucking time. You've just been scrounging around in your demonic contacts, seeing what's up. <laughs> yeah, so he's got his hand around Ray's throat. He's like, yeah, I saw him trying to run off, so... Yeah, sorry. Hey, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I guess Ray, was, he was watching Scar, because he had the cameras in the on the courtyard, and he saw Scar's vanquish. He witnessed Scar's vanquish on the cameras. He kept, it kept replaying over and over again, so he's yeah. like, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. And so, but Cole caught him, and cool. So, yeah, they got him. And then Cole, like, just punched Ray in the face and knocked him out. I'm like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, that was cool. Was fucking sexy. No matter what he does, I'm just like, I'm with it. <laughs> yeah, that was, a hot, that was a hot moment for Cole. It really was. Because yes. like, he was like, you don't think he's in the game in this book? He's just kind of going to the, lo- the library all the time. And he's like, okay, you're back at your roots now. <laughs> all right. So after Cole's random ass appearance... Um, a week later, a week goes by, and Paige arrives in the backyard to see Piper's garden, which they now call the farm. Tomatoes the size of grapefruits, because tomatoes are important, guys. She really <laughs> wanted those tomatoes right now. Yep, we're going to the state fair with this. <laughs> yes. Instant gratification plus. <laughs> Paige had successfully found Todd's father. And his wife, they had come, they had welcomed Todd and the cat, Haiti, into their home with open arms. Yay, the kitty has a home, too. Yeah, I love that. Because <laughs> yeah, they said it was like a stray cat, they, and they made it yeah. act like it was a thing. So now they're they were like, just okay. like, Hank let the goddamn cat in, I think. Like, who knows? Yeah. 
They all have a toast. Here's to happily ever afters. The end. Who knows what happened to the other kids? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you know, hopefully Ray got prosecuted more than just that punch in the face. So, yeah. Oswald it ends well. Yeah, so what are your, your final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts. Holy creeper jeepers. Um, this whole... The whole cult-like thing was very uncomfortable to read at several points. Um, but I do like how they made sure to, I don't want to say redeem Todd, but, you know, put, put him on a path to where he can be loved and grow into, you know, a redeemable yeah. person because he's a fucking brat. Even though, even though that traumatic shit happened to him, he's still a fucking brat. Yeah, he really was. Well, I hope, you know, being with his dad, he calms the hell down and gets some love and gets some hugs because he needs yeah. hugs. Yeah, apparently his dad never knew he even had a kid. And so that was it was nice to see that he was a good guy, not like a deadbeat either. So yes. Nice. And I was a little worried that they weren't going to touch on that. I was like, are they just going to just talk about his dad and then never find him? But they were just like, by the way. Yeah. Everything's good. Everything's good. And then uh, the cat. I'm especially glad the cat got a home. <laughs> Right. No animals were actually harmed in the making of this book. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. I thought this book was so good. Diana Gallagher does know how to write Charmed. Um, she's not the greatest of, at spells, I'm finding, but her books have always been really fun stories. <laughs> um, I still like her book Dark Vengeance more than this because I think the humor in that was was a highlight for me. But this it, was it was like, hard to put that. humor in this, but they really yeah. tried. Yeah. Um, I loved that it expanded some of the dark letter lore, uh, because we didn't know about the concept of future dark letters before. It was always like a future white letter thing. These are future white letters. Right. We have to. So it's cool to know that dark letters do the same thing, and they they were once human too. I appreciated that little tidbit. Uh, and this book provoked real emotional responses for me. Like I, I felt very yeah. concerned for both the sisters and for Todd. I was incredibly frustrated, with, but frustrated by both Ray and Scar. They like. They were just despicable scum of the earth people, uh, which I loved for a villain. <laughs> so they were believable uh, villains too. Like you know, gross, injustful people like that exist, mm -hmm. and so it wasn't just I am the source of all evil. No, they were scumbaggy, dirt baggy people. Yes, and you know, you get it really gives you the satisfaction when they get the comeuppance because that's what you want to see. You want to like you want to yeah. hate them. You want to see the the them get their reward, their just reward. Um, and I feel like the ensemble of characters each has their moments to shine in this book. You know, it wasn't like a sister, not one sister was a priority. They all had their thing to do. Um, and even Cole and Leo had things to do. So I really appreciated that. I do too. They did, they did manage to get everyone had their, had their role to play. Mm -hmm. And I do like, even though it was creepy heebie-jeebies, you're right. It provoked that emotional response. And I like when authors aren't afraid to go there, especially with adult books. It is an adult series. So sometimes you need to go there. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the villains, everyone was three-dimensional. Even when there were some awkward parts where Phoebe was randomly self-reflecting, sometimes <laughs> it does happen in some weird-ass moments. You're like, wait, why am I thinking about this right now? And yeah, I don't have time for this. Right. <laughs> and yeah, I did, and I did... The we did talk about this earlier, but I want to go over like the major premises that Phoebe's visions are not set in stone. And then, but I yeah. always felt like that was always the case because we talked about, you know, I do too. And it's kind of hard to not have her visions be not <laughs> set in stone. If they're right. set in stone, what, why would you get them? Yeah. They're always going to be in flux no matter what. So I do have a few other like, little things I noticed. They said, Mr. Collin was tolerant of page leaving all the time. I wouldn't say he's tolerant. I would just say <laughs> he uh, doesn't, punish it yeah he 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 definitely doesn't like it he's not taller he's just like i was like i need you i still need you exhausted I, I don't know he's compliant right <laughs> but, but Paige I don't think like, it's necessary yeah Paige says he's tolerant of it it's fine i did love that they mention how hallowell ghost magically adds to the book of shadows which would That's support it supports my theory that i had back in the bonus episode that you know that the, the, the they're automatically added to some ghostly magical yeah, of. they're like in their own little other world, sort yeah. of. 
So I'm like, this book confirms that. That's really cool. I, I'm like, yes. I Any, I, any I, other things from the ghostly hand or anything? Right. I'm making yeah. this canon in my head. <laughs> oh, here's something that bothered me a little bit. When Piper and Phoebe bond over their potential anger over the loss, loss of their mother, because Piper's like, you know, were you angry that our mother for dying? Were you? Did you think she abandoned us? And I was very surprised they didn't mention Prue in that scene. Because right, because she was so angry at Prue. That's the very feeling Piper had for Prue after her death. It's the exact same thing. And they would they mentioned that for, they never had that for their mother. I think they, it's easier to get mad about Prue for abandoning them because she was the one always putting herself in danger and putting herself on the line. Right. Uh, the mother wasn't necessarily doing that. Hers was just a happenstance situation. So, But they should have mentioned Prue in that scene. I was bothered by that. I agree. I, I I wholeheartedly agree. It was the exact emotion. Yeah, I said my heart broke for Todd uh, in that moment when Scar shot him out his page because I I was I had that gut that heart like feeling I could because I could imagine how broken and hopeless he would probably have felt in that moment. So I was just like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I couldn't. Mm. This poor twelve year old kid is just like, why do I? Why am I trying? Why do I have a crossbow? Also. I feel like that crossbow would have been the size of that 12 year old boy, but <laughs> oh, well, it's just like, I got this. Yep, yep. All right, so now we have put that in my canonical hats. Canonical. So we are going to investigate anything that uh, maybe have been references to the show, things that may have not been canon or were canon or what. Um, so the invisibility was, I don't feel was right. It was bothersome. I think that they can sense who's in a room to a degree. <laughs> they let that go on, but he can't turn invisible, so that bothered me. I would, I could kind of give it to the Dark Lighter because they have random powers from murdering people. Yeah. But, but Leo's never been able to go invisible, so. But they also are pretty inconsistent with what White Lighters can really do because sometimes he has light telekinesis and you know random. Power like when he just like was like looking through the book like this, and he's just like I don't know. So yes. yeah, <laughs> they're pretty especially, with that. especially in the beginning, they didn't really know what the powers were going to be. I don't think so. It's true. The weather That's powers the are always weird. Is Scar shimmered? He tried to shimmer. He uh -huh. did orb. Yeah, that's a. I have, I'm glad you noticed that. They say that Scar. Because I do, I would try to avoid saying it in the, the summary because I wanted to talk about it here. Um, but yeah, they kept saying Scar shimmered around. I'm like, no, they blorb. I call it blorbing, black orbing. I like that. They blorb. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he should be blorbing around. But I agree. <laughs> I was like, hmm. That was weird. Yeah, I was I was curious if it was on purpose or if it was like a lack of homework being done. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Anything else? No, those were my those were my not uh, okay. my. Time. When Piper was trying to uh, freeze the mouse, I kept thinking of her in Trial by Magic when she's like trying to blow up the rats. She's like, "Get back here, you rodents!" <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was fun. I had flashbacks of that. That was really good. Um, and there was a lot of references to the show in this book, a lot of references to things. So we had was. They talk about Alec. They talked about the Dark Lighter Spirit Eater, Maggie Murphy, who was trying to uh, get her yeah, to Ames. suicide. Ames was in there. And Natalie was there. Although they did have a uh, say something wrong about Ames. They say that he killed his Dark Lighter with a knife when really he just did a fireball on him. Oh, okay. So that was a little different, but that's. Close. They did mention that. Uh, they also mentioned that Phoebe notes that the muse must be on vacation. So they talk about the muses. I um, like that too. They were like, she was like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yep. And Lila, from Paige's work was mentioned. She was in two episodes of the series. She was that chick that was like that weird, like choppy haircut <laughs> in Hell Hath No Fury. And oh, she was in, like, okay. Yeah, yep. that was yeah. So she's actually a character from the show. Um, so that was cool. I would not ever have caught that. Oh. And they say Phoebe mentions their trip to the 18th century Halloween when it actually wasn't in the 18th century because the 18th century starts at 1701 when they went back to 1670. So it should be the 17th century. I'm nitty gritty. Um, oh, yeah. And Phoebe's driving a car. And at first I'm like, okay, she's borrowing Piper's car. Great. But Phoebe does not have a car. Yeah, the they say it's her car. That she said it's her car. Her. Yeah. So I'm like, mm, no. If you didn't say that her car, I could have bought it. But now you made it totally wrong. <laughs> 
Um, and then there's, you know, Paige is still learning. This is a common theme in all these books right now, where she's orbiting all over the place, and she's not really ready for that yet. Uh, so that's all I really have for Canonical, but there's quite a few things. <laughs> all right. So now we're doing rom time. Should we try a spell? Why not? Let's try a spell. In the wind, I send this rhyme. Bring death before me, before my time. You've really got to lay off the rhyming group. Wonderful. Witty, but wordy. I did the rhyme. <laughs> we have two spells this episode or this this book <laughs> all right to fix the copier machine because they needed to put another spell on here and they didn't know where i'm very confident this is why this happened <laughs> um to fix the copier machine tweak the gizmos gears and plates so this machine will duplicate yeah i mean it's fine it- it's okay. I would probably say tweak this gizmo from gear to plate so this machine can duplicate, but that's because I'm picky. Right. I mean, there there's a rhyme and reason to these things, and there's a yeah. flavor to these things. And, I like, um, and they explain it several times throughout the show, like certain things matter of the order. Mm-hmm. And I like that. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, the rhyme itself is fine. It's just the, the where it lands isn't quite right. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of an unnecessary spell. They didn't need it. They didn't need to have Paige try to fix the copier to begin with. I don't know why. It's not her job. Like, she's, yeah, you, she's, you have, don't, she's you have, in the world. Yeah, don't you have tech people in that office or your interns or <laughs> somebody? Anyone else? Little <laughs> social worker. Uh, and then there's the power of three spell that Phoebe magically came up with. Yes, uh, to vanquish Scar, dark enemy of white light, in a mist where death is written. Not in time or in stone, but in the fire cast by demon fist, burn dark light shadow, scar and blood and bone. I don't like it. I it's so like it. it's so long. But then like why not just say scar, blood and bone? Why scar and blood and bone? It is, it's so very wordy. And like it's descriptive. It's like this is because Diana Gallagher is a great author. She knows how to write things and so she uses very strong words. Mm-hmm. But she does not know how to write poems. <laughs> she is not a poet. No. And Good at prose, not at poems. Yeah, so I don't like that. But they have some weird spells, like where they did vanquish Ames and the whole, like, I'm rejecting your deflection and mm-hmm. the whole extra things. So <laughs> it, it makes sense in lore to me that it, it is weird. Yeah. And she, you know, and to be fair, she was having like a really hard time writing it. So <laughs> she only had two lines down until the last chapter. So yeah. All right, now we do our best baddie ranking. Best baddie. <laughs> <Duh. laughs> so uh, this book really kind of moved things around for me. It really shook things up because uh, we have sixteen people on the list right now. So uh, okay. it's. We're getting a lot. Uh, but right now, I'm putting Scar as my number three. I like him because I thought he has that gusto and he had that confidence and he was really pulling the strings. Go, yeah. And Ray actually made my list too because he was such an asshole, such yes. a creeper, such like he's, I mean, he didn't beat he's a lot the of other villain. Like, yeah, I mean, oh my gosh. Oh, I don't like. I don't know. Like, I, part of me wants to put him higher. I have him as number nine right now. Part of me wants to put him higher. I'm just trying to see who is all in here because like. Oh, I don't know. I, I he was he was so horrible. Yes, very it's, naturally it's, evil, not just mwahaha evil. I don't know. It's weird. I, I'll think about that before I get my final list. But that's where they are now. Uh yeah. There. This was a good book. No, I do have a game for you. Grimoire games. What is this? Some kind of game? Grimoire games. Some people think this is entertainment. Grimoire uh, games. Grimoire games, Grimoire names. Okay, so this one, I'm going to give you names of dark letters and white letters in the show. So I'm going to give you a name. You have to tell me if they were a dark letter or a white letter. Ooh, okay. So first one, there's 10, ten names. Are you ready? Okay. Sid. S-I-D. S-I-D. Sid. Dark lighter. Dark lighter, correct. From Jung and the Restless, season 8, episode 19. Mikkel. White lighter. Correct, White Lighter. Yes, from the same episode, Jungle and the Restless. That was the one 
uh, that Paige was she, her charge, and then she got killed by the Dark Lighter, and then she became a White Lighter and saved Paige. Okay, I'm on. I'm on season eight of my rerun, actually. Okay, yeah, it's like it's near the end of the season, so, uh, but yeah, Ronan. Oh, Ronan, Dark Lighter. Correct. You are on a roll. Yes, Ronan is a Dark Lighter from season five, episode nine, Sam I Am, and I actually he was very similar. He's who I thought of when I thought of Scar because he had that like kind of Scar tattoo, that, like tattoo on his face. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, he was a dark letter that Cole kind of recruited and then Cole ended up killing and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of his shenanigans. All of his shenanigans. Damien. Damien, dark lighter. Dark I mean, was, he was with the, David, the name like Damien, the devil child. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is a dark letter. He is from season six, episode 16, the one where Chris was conceived. So yes, in the, in the ghostly plane. Yes. Okay. Keel, K H E E L. Keel, uh, White Lighter. White Lighter. Oh, you're good. Yeah, he was a very minor White Lighter in season seven, episode 11, Ordinary Witches. He was exciting with Sandra and stuff. So, yeah, just kind of a boring old white guy, White Lighter. <laughs> Zola. Zola is a White Lighter. Oh, you know, you know Zola, Uncle Phil, yeah. our good old Uncle Phil, white letter. And yeah. some of these, some of these, most of these white letters are elder white letters, just because they have the more unique names. If I go by just white letters, it's just like Marcus, <laughs> or whatever. Like, okay, you know, JD. Elders were more tricky. Um, yeah. But yeah, he is a white letter from a call to arms, one that Leo killed, unfortunately. Next is Alec, dark letter. Dark letter. We know Alec. He was mentioned yes. in this book quite a bit. Touch of death. Get that Daisy. All right. Aramis. White Lighter? Aramis is the White Lighter, yes. Season 6, episode 19, Crimson Witch Demeanors. He was one of the elder heads. Oh, okay. Next is Salik. Dark Lighter. Dark Lighter. Another one from Jungle and the Restless. He's the higher level, upper level Dark Lighter. Um, another one. There's a lot of Dark Lighters in that season 8 episode. <laughs> and then the last one is Ramus. White Lighter. White letter. Well, that was the one from season five, episode five. Uh, he was in magic where, school, wasn't he? Or no, he was, he was what? Was he in magic school? No, uh, he was the one, the one that was like going to be retiring or whatever, and giving his powers to Kevin. Yes. Oh. So yeah, which is in tights. But yeah, you got them all right. Look at you. That's hey. awesome. <laughs> ten out of ten. Congratulations. I clapped. Uh, <laughs> cool. So that last thing is tips for future white lighters. I was out being a force of good in the universe. What is the moral of this book? Um, oh, mm, mm. I know it's tricky. There's a lot of things we could learn, I suppose. Give your children hugs. Um, <laughs> lots of hugs. Uh, I don't really know what the true lesson is other than give our children love so they don't turn into dark lighters, guys. I like that. I I am a hugger, and as a hugger, I really love that answer. <laughs> I will always hug you as long as you allow me to hug you. I'm not going to be a creeper, but I like hug. <laughs> I'm that person at the conventions, the free hug sign, you know? Yes, yes. Yes. I mean... If you don't like to be touched, fine, but I'm always willing. Right. You can come to me for a hug. Yes, yes. Yeah, my tip is it is wise to be guarded with who you decide to trust. Because <laughs> um, people will either yeah. have your back and legitimately care about you and your well-being, or they will pretend to like you only as long as you're useful to them and take advantage of your trust with manipulation. So take your time, trust your instincts above all else, and, you know, really – be guarded with who you trust. Also, I'm gonna. Sh I'm just gonna shout out. I really. There are awful people, but you know, not everyone in the foster care system is evil. They want to help. Yes. So, yes. This is yes. Not not saying don't trust the system necessarily. It has its problems, but there are good people at its heart. Yes. Find those people. Uh, take your time. Analyze and and learn when to let go. And, and if you are one of those people. You're awesome. Yes. Hugs to you. Yes. <laughs> cool. Well, we reached the end. This was fun. I'm so glad. Uh, where can the people find you? Um, you can find me on various social media on 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, at Axel Aida. Um, and then I have a website if anyone is interested in random witchcraft merchandise and the like. I also upload Book of Shadows pages if you're interested in those. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, you can find this podcast at Words of the Witches on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Go there. You can also follow my other podcast, Hanging with the Hallowells, where we're watching through the show episode by episode with my friend Sean. And, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please email wordsofwitchespod at gmail.com. And uh, send in your ultimate power challenge. Uh, I'm only going to go with one episode, so next episode we will reveal. So you only have, like, a week or two to, to get them to me. And, uh, yeah, cool. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Next episode will be on our regular scheduled programming, uh, our bi-weekly schedule. And, uh, yeah, your destiny still awaits.